Hello everybody, my name is Thorsten Reibel. Welcome to our next webinar with the topic Processing Analog Signals with KNX. Yeah, I'm sitting here together at ABB Stotzkontakt in Heidelberg with Jürgen, with Jürgen Schilder. We will share this webinar together with you. Let's go to the agenda. So we have new components, the new analog actuator AA slash X, X12. There are two products behind. Um, so I will start with the introduction. Um, of these both devices uh, and then we continue uh, with planning, installation and also commissioning of these devices together with the ETS of course and also with our IBAS tool. And then a small yeah, overview of the analog inputs, no new devices already existing uh, <coughs> or coming from the last year, these new components and uh, we only would like to, to add this here to this webinar. But the main content will be the new analog actuators today. So here you see the two new devices, one component for the installation in the distribution board and new uh, decentralized device for installing anywhere outside the distribution board um, in such a box, as you can see here. You might remember also from our analog input we have already. So what is an analog actuator? What is it used for? So an analog actuator converts KNX telegrams, any analog, uh, let me say, uh, or variable <laughs> telegrams, like one byte telegrams, uh, into analog output signals, like a 0 to 10 volt signal to control anything. For example, here you have any air quality sensor or a push button sending out a value transferred to um, also KNX value, let's say, a digital telegram, of course, transferred to an analog output signal, a physical signal to control, for example, here, any blower any fan. So typical application is any heating, air conditioning, ventilation technology, but also lighting technology, where you have to adapt the output variables um, yeah, to participate in any control processes, yeah? to, to control anything, uh, the position of a flap, uh, the speed of a fan, for example. Yeah. So let's go to some more details of this application, ventilation flaps, typical application where you have to open and close uh, yeah, um, any, any uh, airflow yeah, in any, any tube, for example, like here. And, uh, or you have to control any valves, for example, mixing valves in heating and cooling circuits where you have to, to mix uh, the incoming uh, yeah, temperature of a flow uh, with a return flow to get the right uh, yeah, um, outgoing temperature for the water for the system. Or you would like to control frequency converters for any, any fan speed control. Or another application are fan core units. We control or, uh, already very often with our fan core actuators. But if you need a continuous fan speed control, where you need a 0 to 10 volt output, for example, then you can use our analog actuators now together with a valve drive actuator or electronic switch actuator to control then uh, the additional valve behind. So it's a combination then of two devices to control fan core units with continuous fan speed control. Yeah. Very often a 0 to 10 volt signal will be used, yeah? um, as mentioned, to control valves, flaps or frequency converters or any speed of a fan motor. Um, yeah, another application is if you have any, any central boiler or chiller, yeah, which uh, generates uh, chilled water, cool water or hot water, then you have to control sometimes the set point of this boiler or chiller. Also done typically via a 0 to 10 volt signal, which can be, uh, yeah, is available then via our new analog actuator. Example, you have to adjust uh, the set point or the temperature in a boiler uh, between 30 and 80 degrees means 30 degrees is 0 volt from our analog actuator, 80 volt is 10 volt, so 55 volt in the middle, of course, would then mean 5 volts uh, control signal output. Yeah. But also some more complex applications are possible. Example is a six-way valve, where you control um, with one valve both a cooling circuit with cold water, but also a heating circuit. So for example, you have to control between 0 and 5 volt the hot water circuit and between uh, 5.1 volt maybe and 10 volt uh, the cold water 
uh, supply. So with one analog output, uh, you control a four pipe heating cooling uh, circuit. Yeah, another application away from any heating, ventilation, air conditioning application is controlling special dimmer, uh, dimmer which need an active analog signal to be controlled. Our switch dimmer actuator, SDS or LRS, they have a so-called passive 0 to 10 or 1 to 10 volt output. So the 10 volt is coming from the ballast itself, but some dimmer need an active signal we can provide with our analog actuator. So any kind of dimmer which needs this can be controlled. High performance dimmer, for example, LED dimmer, whatever. So this is possible. And uh, what we can provide is one milliampere per output then for such an active signal for such a dimmer. It's not very, let me say, often in use, but also in some special situation possible with our analog actuator. Yeah, let's come now to the components as a first overview. Um, so we start with the analog uh, actuator as a DIN rail component to be installed in a distribution board. So it has four modules widths and four analog outputs, as you can see here. For each output, we have two connection terminals. And which kind of analog signals can be provided? Voltage signals, 0 to 1, 0 to 5, 0 to 10, and also 1 to 10 volt, DC, of course. And additionally, a current signal, 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 milliampere, also sometimes in use for controlling any, any uh, yeah, uh, actuators outside. We have indication lamps, LEDs here. We will explain later. Um, as you can see here below, there is an additional uh, yeah, connection terminal too to connect operating voltage. So we need an external uh, voltage of 100, between 100 and 230, uh, 240 volt AC to yeah, supply this device. Yeah. yeah, we had already an analog actuator before, so it's not completely new. Um, so it will, of course, replace our existing analog actuator AAS41. Yeah, which uh, is a relatively old device, so we uh, have now a new component with also more options in the software. Software you will see later on. Yeah, and additionally, that's really new because not existing before, an analog actuator, two-channel device as a decentralized component. So, so, so for surface mounting, there's a complete closed box, uh, IP54 protection level and you see here the cable entries, four in total, to, to yeah, insert the cables um, you need, of course, to connect your outputs. Yeah, a further difference is that we have only voltage signals here with this uh, analog actuator for surface mounting available. So no current uh, signals, but all these voltage signals we have just explained already. And a further difference is, difference is that you need no external power supply for this device. So the device itself will be supplied only via the KNX bus voltage. But that's then, the consequence is then that you have no current output available here. So for a decentralized installation, it's quite useful to have uh, no additional uh, yeah, power supply necessary, which leads to, of course, more wiring and a more complex installation. So you need only the KNX bus cable, and then you connect here your uh, via your outputs uh, the components you need. Yeah, some features of both devices. Um, galvanic isolation between analog outputs and KNX operating voltage is valid for here for both devices. Uh, it was not existing before. Um, of course, each output. Uh, four volt and two volt is completely independent. You can parameterize everything independently. So you can have one channel as a voltage output, another one for with a current output. It's up to you, depending on your parameters. Um, the KNX telegrams coming to this analog actuator can be can be between one byte and four bytes, and of course you can parameterize different things like how to react, uh, how should the output react in case of reset of bus voltage recovery. Uh, so it's possible to specify for each output independently. We have increased the accuracy of the outputs. Um, so real zero volt at analog outputs. Uh, if you have no a value coming to this device, this was not uh, available before. And last but not least, uh, as expected, we have uh, 
integration also in the IBAS tool here available. So you will see later on uh, from Jürgen how it works, what is possible together with the IBAS tool. Yeah, uh, it's of course in KNX device, so we have any ATS application available. Um, important is that we support ETS4 and ETS5, but not ETS3 anymore with this device. So for those who still are, wor are still working with ETS3, it's a it's a challenge. You need minimum ETS4 here. So there are some additional parameters you will see later on. Um, forced operation for higher priorities. So in case of any special situation, you can uh, bring the output to a defined value. As mentioned, we can control also dimmers. So we have dimming functions. We have dimming communication objects, 4-bit and, and 1-byte as well. We can integrate uh, the outputs into any scene management, scene control. Uh, Incoming KNX telegrams to be sent out as, as an analog uh, value can be monitored. If a cyclical sending is required of these telegrams, we can monitor whether it's really cyclically sended, uh, sent. And um, you will see later on, we have a very nice option to adapt um, the output behavior. Yeah, so uh, the output characteristic curve of these analog signals can be adapted to your requirements. Have a look later. We have a, uh, some slides with a graphical, let me say, presentation how it looks like. And finally, yeah, integration into IBAS tool. Also, this will be uh, shown later with some screens or some screenshots. Um, so it's as in almost all new devices, part of our complete solution to give you some options together with our IBAS tool. Um, you might remember the IBAS tool is a service tool from ABB, only for ABB KNX devices, free of charge, allows to operate some functions and components, but also to, to visualize uh, status information from devices, uh, of devices. And so it's a quite useful tool for any system integrator or installer who is working practically with our KNX devices, who has to commission our components and to check the functions finally on the site. Yeah, let's compare both analog actuators here in this uh, sheet. Um, DINREAL components AAS412 and surface mounted device AAA212, as you can see here. We need only for the DINREAL device an external power supply. Four outputs, two outputs. Both have the same voltage outputs, voltage signals. And only the DINREAL device has also analog current outputs. Yeah, the list price. As you can see here, 380 euros um, and euros here, and the small, the decentralized surface mounted device, 275 uh, euros. Yeah, as already mentioned, uh, we can adapt the output signals. Um, see the foot mark here, depending on parameterization, you can also change the output signal, for example, between two and six volts. Uh, so not only zero to 10 volt, but we'll see, uh, we'll see this later in, in the further slides. Yeah, what else will be available for the market launch? Of course, our, let's say, standard material, the product manual, technical data. Technical data is more or less an extract of the product manual with the main uh, technical features. Everything available on our website then. Of course, we will have then a PowerPoint presentation uh, based on this presentation you see right now. And uh, as mentioned, our webinar from today, we will record and uh, also, we'll make it available for you on YouTube, um, so anybody can have a look later as well. Yeah, on the, our homepage, if you go then to the product, you find some more detailed information besides the product manual, technical data, of course, also the application software. But as always, installation and operating instructions, specification texts, and so on. So this will be, as always, part of our yeah, material we deliver together with our KNX devices. Market launch, when will it be available? Very soon, so beginning of August, week 31. Both devices, DIN rail and uh, surface mounted device. And yeah, the existing components, there are two. Let me uh, explain quickly what is behind. The old one, analog actuator AAS41, had also four outputs. And there was an additional yeah, module available to extend the number of outputs by another, by another four an extension module in principle. So in total, you could have eight 
uh, analog outputs more or less in one device. These devices will be discontinued, of course. You will get uh, a further information how the yeah, phase out process will uh, take place. Then. Yeah, let's summarize the main features and the, yeah, the value proposition of these new components. So we have a wide range supply voltage input from 100 to 230 volt AC. Remember, only necessary for the Dean Ray component. So it gives us the option to use it worldwide for any voltage level in the world. Galvanic isolation between analog outputs and uh, KNX and especially the operating voltage, which was not available before. So you need not separate power supplies for supplying your um, yeah, analog component behind and the KNX analog actuator itself. So it can be one uh, power supply here as well. Um, surface mounted variant now available, which was not existing before. So easy decentralized installation next to any uh, device you have to connect. Higher accuracy of the output signal, yeah, which is uh, much better than before. The software issues, integration into IBAS tool, as mentioned, our unique and easy to use uh, commissioning and diagnostic tool. The adaption of the output curve, and we will see later how it works. Uh, it's very nice and very, let me say, user-friendly and very, let me say, flexible. So you can require, I said, adapt this to any required output signals you need. Integration into scene management, yeah, makes it also interesting if you have any superior functions, which were which are very often done via scenes. So it gives you here also some more option. And we have more KNX input data types, data point types uh, to be sent to the device uh, from one byte to four byte uh, with all, let me say, subtypes we have in this case. So it gives you also some more flexibility and options to, to integrate it into your solution. Yeah, um, now I would like to hand over to Jürgen. If you have a look to the bottom of our pages here, of our slides, uh, maybe you have seen already at the beginning, always uh, introduction was shown here. Now we have some more, basic and planning. So you will see uh, in our further yeah, webinars, uh, let me say distinction between different levels. Introduction I have done right now, and then we have basic level for planning, installing, commissioning, maybe also an uh, advanced and also an expert level. So we will uh, structure this a bit in future to give you a hint on which level you are right now. Okay, then I hand over to Jürgen, who will start with the planning topic a bit, uh, or continue with the planning topic on a basic level for our new analog actuator. Hello and welcome <coughs> to the second part of this webinar. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I'm continuing. I would like to start with the so-called basic level. Thorsten has now explained the introduction of the device in the first level. I continue with the basic level with the chapter planning, afterwards installing and the final step is here or the final chapter commissioning. So now I'd like to start with the first chapter, the so-called planning to give you some information how we plan the device in a real project. At first, very important when we start planning, you have to observe your local standards and for example, directives or other regulations. So, which is also responsible here to follow our KNX international standard. KNX is certified, uh, has, is an international standard according to ISO, EIC and EN. And for analog systems, analog signals, there are also two standards available. One is the IEC 60381-1, which is for the current signals, and the minus, 10, minus 2 for the voltage signals. So here you can read, for example, some uh, information about this handling of analog, current and voltage signals. So here, let's come to the technical data of the analog actuator AA slash S. S means the Dean rate component. Four, we have four analog outputs and here uh, one and the two, which means the generation. So the device, the bus couple unit gets the energy, uh, gets the energy via KNX, supplied via KNX. So maximum current is here from KNX 10 milliamps. Additionally, the device needs operating voltage. So when planning device, it's important that we have KNX and between 100 and 200 volt AC plus 10% or minus 50 
and of course 50 or 60 Hertz, so for worldwide use. And totally we have four analog outputs. It is labeled from A to D. The analog voltage signals can be 0 to 1 volt DC, 0 to 5, 0 to 10, 1 to 10, and we can also uh, maybe have flexible ranges depending on the parameterization. For example, we can limit the range from 2 to 6 volt. So the output signal later you would see will be here in this range. For the current signals, we have the two ranges 0 to 20 milliamps and 4 to 20 milliamps. And of course here, again, depending on the parameterization, we can limit the range between 5 and 10 milliamps of the output signals. Very important is here the output signal load of the device. So when we use it as a voltage output, then the voltage signals must be greater than one kilo, or the, the, the load must be greater than one kilo ohm, and the current signal must be uh, less than 500 milliohms. The output current for voltage signals maximum 10 milliamps, and for current signals maximum 20 milliamps. So when blending the device, you have to observe here this maximal load. And the device is now mounted on a, on a standard DIN rail, uh, DIN rail row, like all our DIN rail components. And uh, here are the dimensions of the device. We have uh, a maximum width of 70 millimeters, which is for 18 milli modules. So let's come to the analog actuator, surface mounted, AA slash A, the A means here surface mounted, and the two that we have two analog outputs. So these two analog outputs are labeled at A and B. The voltage signals are the same like the DIN rail component, but here we have no current signals. So very important, only voltage signals. That's why the device needs also no additional supply voltage or auxiliary voltage. And here it's a bit different. The output signal load is when we use the voltage signals must be greater than 5 kilo ohms and the maximum output current can be only 2 milliamps. Very important. So we have to observe here the maximum load. The device is surface mounted uh, with screws. So here on the four corners, there are holes to fix it via screws, maybe on a, on a wall. The dimensions 117, uh, uh, the, the height and the width and the deep 51 millimeter. And the protection, the IP protection code of the device is now 54, the so-called splash guard. <clears throat> so the input formats, the input K and X telegrams in both devices is the same. So depending on the parameterization, the analog actuator can listen to a one byte, which is an unsigned telegram, uh, uh, unsigned one byte telegram between zero and 255, which is the data point type 5005. Or it can be between 0 and 100%, then it is the data point type 5001. Or it can be also assigned one byte value between minus 128 and 127, then it's according to the data point type 6010. The input signal can be also a two byte telegram, KNX telegram, yeah, the same uh, unsigned telegram between. 0 and 65,535, which is data point type 7001. It can be also assigned telegram between minus 32,768 and blah blah blah. This which is the data point type 8001, or it can be also a floating data point type, which is data point type 90. And also possible that the analog actuator can listen to a 4 byte. Uh, KNX telegram, which is the data point type 14.0. And a very nice feature is we can create maybe the own characteristic, so the behavior between our input signal and our K, uh, and the analog output signal can be adapted. Maybe that's why we have here 11 value pairs. Later you will see here an example. And of course both devices have a status byte which is sent to the KNX to see maybe uh, to get information if the output, for example, is overloaded or other things. <clears throat> Here are the nice features of the both devices. We have additional dimming parameters when you use one output as a dim to control dimmers. And then you get, for example, here the parameters similar to a dim actuator. We support a 8-bit scene control. 
the forced operation. Later I give you also an uh, explanation. So, and the cyclical monitoring of the input value, maybe which is sent by your KNX sensor. And when the sensor does not send it cyclically or the KNX is interrupted, then we can set here maybe a default uh, or forced kind of forced operation. And the reaction on bus voltage failure or the recovery and ETS programming can be also set in the devices. So let's come here to some planning examples, how you can use the analog actuator, how it can work, a short functional description. So now we use it here to control a blower. The blower needs additional uh, operating voltage, for example, 230 volt. The analog actuator receives a KNX telegram sent by a control element, presence detector or eye quality sensor. It is a KNX telegram. And then he converts this KNX telegram into analog signal, for example, 0 to 10 volt. And depending on the signal, the speed of the fan is here controlled um, yes, without steps, maybe continuously. This is one example how we can use here our analog actuator. So Aura, we use here a special kind of valve, so-called six-way valve. This six-way valve can be used for controlling and heating, uh, to control heating or cooling valves in, in, in one device. It is here controlled via a servo motor. The motor needs again supply voltage, 12 or 24 volt DC. He gets his uh, analog signal from the analog actuator. And then we have in our system maybe a superior system or um, a kind of con controller, which sent here our control value to the analog actuator. He converts it into our analog signal. And the signal between 0 and 10 milliamps is used, for example, here to open the valve for heating. And when we have here control value between 10 and 20 milliamps, we use it to control the valve for cooling. So this is also a new feature we can uh, realize here with the new analog actuators. Or here the example, um, the description, when we use the analog actuator to control here dimmers, we have, uh, for example, the analog actuator, the surface mounted, which is installed in the false ceiling nearby the LED dimmer. The LED dimmer needs again supply voltage, 12 or 24 volt DC. It depends on our LEDs. And he gets the analog signal here from our analog actuator. And with our rockers, we can switch or dim, short or long pressing, and send dimming or switch telegrams or values, 8 bit values, go to 50% to the analog actuator. He converts it into analog signal, send the information, and controls here our dimmer. And we can here dim our LEDs, for example. These are here the three examples how we can use the analog actuators maybe for, for planning. Good, let's come to the next chapter from planning. We jump now to the installation and I give you some information about the installing of the analog actuators. So very important when you really start to install the analog actuator, yeah, you need here really electrotechnical expertise. So not only for beginners, you really you need uh, experience how to work and the license to work with uh, the electrical devices. And again, listen to your local, for example, standard what you need. So and very important to use the devices only yeah, inside a specified technical data. So a look at the temperature range for, for example, the IP protection, very important. <clears throat> so let's come to the analog actor, the AAA slash S. The device uh, is, uh, is, is suitable for installing on a standard mounting rail according to the European standard, like all other KNX devices. And it is also necessary to have access to the device, for example, for testing or for maintenance, for example, when you have to measure here the voltage when you're looking for a failure. So this must be also ensured that you have every time access for the uh, for, for installing. So our electrical uh, connections are here. We use our standard screw terminals. So here you can connect sensor, the cables to the sensors between 0 0.2 and 2.5 square millimeters when we have fine stranded cores or 0 0.2 up to 4. Uh, 0 0.0 square millimeters when we have, for example, single core. This is here possible. So, and the connection to the KNX, we use here our standard KNX connection terminal. So, here the connection diagram of the device. 
we have uh, the label carrier here to write, for example, the individual or physical address of the device. We have the KNX programming button and the programming LED, the bus connection terminal here, and the power supply connection with the vo wide voltage input. Here our four analog outputs. We have the status LEDs and the status LED of the KNX and power LEDs, which I explain you in the next, next slides. So far the wiring diagram. Let's go into the details of our four analog outputs. So we have the four analog outputs. The first um, connection terminal, here's the output A. And the next one, the second one is the ground, the zero. So all grounds of all four outputs are here linked together. Here, connection terminal number three is the output to our uh, uh, to our device number B, C, and D. And D here, so you see an example. We have parameterized it as an analog output between 0 and 10 volt to control, for example, here motor or fan to control here the speed via KNX. So far, the connection. Let's come to the LEDs. On the analog actuator, we have four LEDs for each, for each single output. So we have here the status LED of output A, B, C, and D, and the LED is off. When, for example, the output is off, really we have zero volt or zero milliamps under our output. And when it's greater than zero, the LED is on. And when the LED flashes, then maybe there is a failure. Then we have uh, overload, the load is too high on one output. The next, two LED, the next LED is the green power LED. The green power LED shows that our supply, additional supply voltage is okay. And the green status KNX LED shows that the KNX bus voltage is okay. So with one view, you see here KNX is okay and our supply voltage is okay. <clears throat> and of course, we have our KNX programming button and the programming LED. So when you press the programming button, then you will see the red LED goes on and shows also that the KNX bus voltage is okay. Yes, and this is our new concept of our new KNX devices, the new housing. So we have started this, yeah, this, this new principle with the new IP router. So how uh, you need here no screwdriver, for example, when you remove the device. When you want to snap it on the mounting rail, yeah, you press down and then move here this, uh, this upper, yeah, the upper ground here to the DIN rail and then you have clicking, then it's fixed automatically. This is not new, this is the same like before. But when you want to remove it, you have to press here on the top the housing down and move it away here from the DIN rail without a screwdriver. So this is a new principle and really fine. So really nice advantage of the new generation of our housings. So let's come to the <coughs> installation steps. Very, very important. When you start to install the device, de-energize the complete electrical installation and make sure that no one, for example, can switch on the energy when you are working here and uh, wire the device. Then snap the device onto the mounting DIN rail, connect the cables for the operating voltage for the DIN rail component, connect KNX, and check again here um, when you control for, uh, to, uh, the analog control inputs of your related devices, so for example your terminal device that you have here for voltage signal, signals more than great, more than one kilo ohm, and for current signals less than 500 milliohms. So far after these steps, switch on the operating voltage and KNX. The actuator now starts up. After some seconds, the KNX bus couple, uh, the KNX bus couple unit works. You see the green status LED here goes on and the power LED is green. And the status of the outputs can be on or off. It depends on our output signals. The next step is to start the ETS and to do commissioning with the ETS. So far, some words about the installing of the device. For testing, remember it's a KNX device. You can press the programming button and then you will see the red LED is on or not. When the red LED is on, then the KNX bus voltage is okay. To test the operating voltage, you can take a digital multimeter and measure here. Then you should measure maybe between, depending on your supply voltage, between 100 and 230 volt DC. So let's come to the installation of the analog actuator surface mounted. This device is suitable for surface mounting in any position. So maybe you can mount it on the wall or on the ceiling, doesn't matter. We have here four holes to fix the device with screws. The screws uh, come with, come with together with the, with the device. So we have not to buy additional screws. <clears throat> 
so here is also very important that you that the access accessibility must be ensured. So every time that we have access to the device, for example, for maintenance, for testing, or for measuring. And here we have other screw terminals, small one, which are pluggable, and here it's limited up to 1.5 square meters, square millimeters for fine stranded, and up to 1.0 square millimeters for single core. And here for KNX, we have not our standard KNX connection terminal, we have also here the pluggable, the green one, uh, which can be used for the KNX. So very important, we have to do the kind of um, what we call it? No, I think it's the next uh, um, the um, Zugentlastung. Ah, what's the English word? Um, ah, no, okay. Um, the scope of delivery. Sorry, I was wrong. I was in the wrong slide. The scope of delivery, the analog data comes with four of these cable entries, uh, which are open, and two cable entries which are closed. So depending when you have more than two cables, uh, then you have to use the opened or the closed cable entries. Very important. Do not take a knife and open the closed cable entries. You have to replace it by the opened cable entries. So, and then in a, it comes also with the installation and the operating instruction, the bus pluggable screw terminal, the screw terminal for the sensors, four cable ties for the strain you leave, like here, for example. The incoming or outgoing cables can be fixed here on these cable entries via the cable types. Very important. And of course, we have here four screws and four S6 towels for fixing the device on the wall or on the ceiling. So the connection diagram. <clears throat> We have again here the label carrier to write the individual or physical address, the programming button, the LED, the connection here to the bus, our complete housing. Here our two analog outputs, output A and B. We have the cover and here our four cable entries with open or closed cable entries. So to connect our analog output signals, we have here output A and output B and here our KNX cable. So the, <coughs> it is a standard KNX device, so we have still our programming button and the LED. So also for testing, you can press the programming button and then we see the red LED is on or off when we have KNX bus voltage, yes or no. The installation steps, the same like before, the other analog actuator, de-energize your complete electrical installation and prevent unintentional reclosing of the rectical plant. So fix then the housing with the with the screws and the dowels on a flat surface yeah, in any position you want. <clears throat> so put inside the cable and the outgoing cable, fix it via the cable ties to carry out the strain relief, connect the cables for your analog control inputs to the related device and the KNX cable. The next step, switch on KNX. The actuator starts up and after some seconds yeah, he's ready for commissioning with ETS4 or ETS5. So now let's come to the next topic, yeah, the next chapter in our level basic, which is the commissioning. So then start the ETS, ETS4 or 5, insert the device, the analog actuator to your building view or to topology view, it depends what you are preferring. And set the parameters of the actuator depending on the requirements of the installation. If it's a, a voltage output, a current output, the signal 0 to 10, 4 to 20 milliamps. Create and link your group addresses. Write a good description to each single group address. Download the individual address and the application. And afterwards, we have to test the settings of the analog actuator, which is very very clever or very easy when you use the IBUS tool. Later I show you the IBUS tool. And of course, you have to test the complete function, functional implementation. So really go to your sensor, to, the, to your prion or to air quality sensor and send a telegram to the actuator and see what happens here with the blower. So test the complete, uh, the complete uh, step from sending the KNX telegram uh, until the reaction of your terminal device like here, the blower. So let's come to the parameter of the ETS. I show you here the screenshots of ETS 5. <clears throat> so let's start with the first topic, which is here the general parameters, the general parameters of, this, of the complete device. Like here, our standard parameters we have in all our KNX devices to enable, for example, the group object in operation, 
such things or to enable the group object for request, the status values. Yeah, this is here possible. So then <coughs> you can also uh, um, change here, for example, the number of telegrams, for example, the which, no, I'm wrong here. Number of telegrams, for example, between 50 milliseconds, one meter, one minute is possible. Yeah, or for requesting the status value with a zero or with a one or one or zero. Yeah, this is possible. Then let's go to the interesting parameters, like here in a channel. The parameters of channel A, B, C, D are the same. I'd like to introduce you all the parameters, for example, here in the channel A. So let's start with the first. The first one, we have to set here the parameter, the type of our output. The output A, for example, you can deactivate or say no, it is a voltage output between 0 and 1 volt, 0 and 5, 0 to 10 or 1 to 10. Or use it as a current output, 0 to 20 milliamps, 4 to 20 milliamps. This is a type of the output. And then we have to set the parameter, the input signal, our KNX telegram. Is it a one byte? which is for example here unsigned, 0 to 100%, or it is assigned 1 byte, it is unsigned 2 byte, assigned 2 byte, assigned 2 byte, a 2 byte, 2 byte, or 4 byte float value. Also possible. And for example, would you like to use here the forced operation? Uh, yes or no. And uh, about the status values, when they had to be updated, uh, when the value change or after change and request or cyclically is here also possible. <clears throat> so very nice features here when we want to change the characteristic, for example, uh, of the output signal, which I show you later, then we can have here the parameters of up to 11 value pairs. Uh, we can change here or we can set the parameters. So now in our example, you remember before we had our blower and the blower should be controlled via analog signal. How we create our group addresses and link it. At first we need a sensor. We use here, for example, a control element with Froca1. This is a special parameter. Maybe for some of you it is new. It is called value dimming. And this is a one byte a data point type, not our typical four bit dimming up and down. Here we can send values, one byte values. When we press on the left side, then he sent values, for example, 75%, 70%, 65%. So here he sent uh, up, uh, down going values, and on the right side, up going values, 50, 55, 60, 65, for example, percent. And here this is a parameter uh, about the difference of this step, 5%, for example. And with the second drawer, we send fixed values, maybe on the left side, 30% on the right side, 80%. So we link both rockers with the same group address because both are one, both are one byte data point types. And here in our actuator, we have our so-called input value, which is also a one byte. And then we link the group address 1455, which is sent via rocker 1 or rocker 2. And he responds with the status, for example, 1452 to see maybe here on your comfort touch the status of the, of the output number A. And then when we press here, up or down, he sent the one byte value and the actuator received the telegrams and converted it here into our analog signal. So the same here, when we use, uh, when we come back to our example at the beginning, when we, when we want to, when, if you want to control here our six point valves, we have again a group address, which is linked to the input value, for example, here 2485, which is sent maybe from our superior system or another controller. So we link this group address here to the input value. That's all in principle. We need no other group address. You can use also the status, and then we have to link here a status group address, and the status is sent back to KNX to your comfort touch or somewhere else. <clears throat> now, when we want to use the device for dimming, then we have to enable the dimming parameters here in the dimming function in our output A, and then we get here a new uh, a new page with the dimming parameters. For example, the speed for dimming, the relative speed, like you know it from other dim actuator, between 0 and 100%, for example, 5 seconds or 10 seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> and the dimming speed for switching is also possible. And when we send a one bit telegram switch on, should be used, for example, the last output value or the user defined value. These are dimming parameters like we have it in our standard dim actuator. And you can see we get here <clears throat> two 
two, uh, two, uh, two additional communication uh, objects. One is the dimming uh, and one is the switching to link the group addresses sent by our switch sensor or control element. We have here one rocker. <clears throat> rocker one is used for switching and for dimming. So we link the group address for switching to the object switching and for dimming and for sending a value. We link it, for example, to rocker number two. And then we link the group address also here in our analog actuator for switching to this communication object, switching to dimming and value. The same principle like you know it from a standard KNX dim actuator. <clears throat> Good, let's come to the additional function scenes. So when, you when we have enabled the function scenes in channel A, then we get here one page with the scenes. So we can uh, say, for example, when we call scene number five, and then we can set here the parameter or our output value between zero and 100%, uh, which we have, for example, specified before in the channel A. So, so we can integrate this actuator into our scene control, the typical 8-bit scene between scene number one and 64. So for example, in the meeting room, when we when we start, when we call our scene start presentation, the light goes up and down, the shutter in a position, and then for example, the fan goes automatically in a desired fan speed via this analog signal. <clears throat> so the first operation, the first operation has a higher priority than our KNX input telegram. You can use it. We have two uh, priorities, first operation one and two. And we can use the one bit first operation or the former two bit, depends what you prefer. And then when we activate the first operation, then we can set here the value, go to 50%, 80%, and so on. So now let's come to testing the KNX actuator, independent if the surface mounted or the DIN rail component. We use our IBUS tool. The ABB IBUS tool is free of charge. You can download it from our website. We can test, for example, or do diagnostic for a wide range of our ABB products, like, for example, the DALI, the KNX power supplies, the shutter actuators, energy actuator, and so on, line couplers, a lot of devices. So the first step is, we set all the parameters in our in the ETS, download the application to the KNX device, and then start the IBUS tool and via the individual address read out the parameterization. So with the IBUS tool, we cannot change a parameter, we cannot assign a group address or the leader group address. It is only a, for example, a diagnostic tool to check if the parameter is okay or to simulate, for example, KNX telegrams, which I show you later. So now we start the IBUS tool. We have connection to the device via USB or IP router, IP interface, doesn't matter. Same like ETS. We need only the individual address of the actuator. And then now we are here connected point to point. And then the IBUS tool reads out all settings from our analog actuator. Like here, I show you here a screenshot. I'm connected with my analog actuator uh, with the four analog outputs. You see here on the first page, which is all, all outputs. You see here channel A, B, C, D. The green LED is on. The power supply the additional is okay. We see the parameterization of the four outputs. Output A, 0 to 10. Same C, uh, channel B. Channels, uh, output C is used as 4 to 20 milliamps and D, 1 to 10. The output value at the moment, you see for example here, 1.4. Uh, volts or here output C 30 and a half milliamps. If it's a failure, no, 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 everything is fine. Only here channel B, for example, we have a short circuit. Maybe there is a, a mistake in the wiring on the output number B. So you can check it here. And if the first operation is, is parameterized, yes or no. And the cyclic and monitoring of the control value. Like here it is like ray, so it is enabled and this is okay. So we can see also here all your parameterization par parameter settings. Then let's go here into detail into channel number A. We see here again the parameterization, 0 to 10 volt, no failure. You see at the moment here the physical value on the output and here the input value, which is for example 0 at the moment. So now channel B, the same, all the settings, the output signal, the input value. Uh, Channel C, for example, <coughs> is parameterized as a current output between 4 and 20 milliamps. You see here the physical current at the output at the moment, 12 milliamps. Yeah, and here our input signal, which is 50, 50%. 50 
So now you can also simulate your KNX telegram. So when you click at first on the button, yeah, select here <coughs> this menu, then you have access and then you can write here an uh, input value. For example, when you have said this is between 0 and 100%, then you can write here 81, click here maybe on this enter button and then he's listening not to the KNX telegram, the actuator is listening here to this value and then you will see the reaction on the output. So he will go maybe to 60.08 milliamps. So really here you can test your KNX telegram and see the reaction on the output if it's correct. Or when you go here to the physical value, you can enter here also a value, for example, 8.2 uh, 8 milliamps, press here on this button, and then this value is really sent to the output of the device. Yeah, so you can send, uh, you send, you can test, for example, your target device. Also a nice feature for testing here the analog actuator. So see uh, output number D, I have enabled here the scene function and I can simulate here a scene. For example, I write here five, I click here on the button, recall scene number five, and then we'll see the behavior on the output. It's like when someone calls the scene number five via KNX telegram. But when you write here telegram, he's not listening to the KNX scene, he's listening here to your, to your uh, entering of the value. And here you see <coughs> the values you have parameterized in the device. For example, C number five go to 50%, scene number seven go to 70%. These are the settings of the ETS. So with this feature of the IBAS tool, really you can do diagnostic and you can check the settings and the behavior of your parameterization. When there is a mistake or something not correct, close the IBAS tool, go back to the, to the ETS, change the parameters and download the application again and test again via the IBAS tool your, uh, the behavior of the output. Good. So far, the basic level of uh, of the device. Let's come. You see here on the on the bottom to the advanced commissioning steps. So for for more trained people or maybe for more experience, I'd like to explain here maybe deeper parameter. That's why we are now here the level advanced. So advanced, for example, we can change the characteristic of our output. When we say no, which is default, then we have a kind of linear behavior between our input value and the output level. What does it mean? For example, our input input uh, input value we have set is from 0 to 255 and our output from 0 to 10 volt. So now here on, uh, on our X range, we have here the input value 0 to 255. And here we have the output level 0 to 10. And then depending our input level, you see we have the linear reaction or behavior on our output. So for example, when we send the value 0, our output value 0, when we send 255, the output signal is now 255. This is the typical linear. But now we can change it. Yeah? Why, for example? Sometimes you need an output signal only between 1 and 6 volt. Only an example. So, and then we start, then we say here, create your own characteristic, yes. And then we have the possibility to use up to, L, uh, up to use 11 value pairs or support points. And then for example, we write here, the first support point is here the beginning. When we have here the value zero, our input value, then the output value should be minimum one volt. So we write here, zero is our input value on the first support point and our output value in millivolts, be careful, it is a millivolts, milli, millivolts, sorry, milli, milli, <laughs> millivolts, 1000. And the second support point is here at the end. So when we have 255, the output value should be 6000 millivolt. So that's why we write here 6000. And then our output value is between one yeah, and six volt, depending here on our input signal. So this is a nice feature, for example, when we use only two, the beginning and the end of our value pairs. We can do more. For example, we can say, okay, we have more up to 11 value pairs. Let's do it with two. The first one is zero. So the first uh, pair is zero, zero. The next one is when we have the input value 50, we have also, we have still on our output zero. When we have 200, the output, we want to have 10 volts and more than 200, we have still 10 volts. So here are our four value pairs, 0, 0, 50, 
in, zero out, 200 in, 10,000 millivolts out, and 255, also 10,000 10, out. So we have here a signal which is between zero and 50, the output signal is still zero, and between 50 and 200, we have here a linear behavior. And more than 200 value, our input signal, we have still our 10 volt. This is, for example, possible. Yeah. Or we can do it like this one. Yeah. <clears throat> we use also our four value pairs, and our output value should be between 60 and 4 milliamps. Yeah. And when we have here an input value, a two byte, which is unsigned between 0 and 65,000, yeah, and you need exactly maybe this kind of behavior, then our first value pair is here when we have 0, it should be 16 milliamps, until 25,700 zero, and then the current goes down up to 55,400, up to 4 milliamps, and then we have continuously also 4 milliamps. So we need here four value pairs, this one, this one, this one, and this one. This is also possible. Yeah. And Another, another solution is, for example, when we have um, maybe a kind of wealth drive which is not linear and when we want to change this nonlinear behavior by using analog signal, then we can use here also our own characteristic. For example, here our, is our uh, input value between 0 and 100% and here we have our output value. And then at the beginning between 0 and 20, you see here we are, it's, it's rising, then it gets lower, slower, slower, slower. So, so with this maybe parameterization, we can compensate the non-linear behavior of a valve drive. It is also possible. So totally we have, up, uh, we have the chance to use up to 11 of these value pairs. Good. Um, some, some information about our still existing actuators, uh, act, uh, inputs, sorry, not actuators, inputs, analog inputs, only as a kind of reminder. Uh, we have uh, two analog inputs. Let me remind you. These are the two devices. One is here for Dean Rail installation with four analog inputs. And again, one device with two analog inputs for decentralized installation. So, uh, with the analog input, the d -ray component, we have four analog input signals. Additionally, we have integrated the power supply, 24 volt DC, with up to 300 milliamps. Also, the device has a wide voltage range input, and we can use a wide range of sensors. So, between 0 and 1 volt, 0 to 5, 0 to 10, 1 to 10, 0 to 20, 4 to 20, also temperature sensors between 0 and 1000 ohm, PT100, PT1000, and also possible to use potential free contacts. So, and then he converts these analog signals into KNX telegrams. So, here overview of some parameters, for example. Yeah, we can free adjustable signals from the sensor. It depends on the type of the sensor. We can send the values as one bit, one byte, two byte, or four byte, signed, unsigned, or also as a float, vol uh, float voting value. We can filtering the measures, maybe four, 16, or 64 measurements. We can use the thresholds, up to two thresholds for upper or lower minute. And then when he reaches his upper limit to send the one bit information, we have comparator, arithmetic functions inside, the mean value, for example. We can, uh, we can also change uh, or set the offset temperature, plus minus 5 degrees. Maybe it depends when the sensor gets every time uh, uh, offset somewhere. We can uh, compensate the cable or the line to our PT100, PT1000 resistance, so the cable length. Yeah, it's a parameter. And uh, we can have here the auxiliary voltage. For this, for this to supply our analog sen sensors and is also integrated into the IBUS tool. So the analog uh, input for surface mounted, the only difference is we have only two input signals. It's for decentralized installation. We can connect only the temperature sensor PT100, PT1000 in two wire technology. So we have not a possibility uh, to compensate, for example, the line resistance. But we can also use KT or KTY temperature sensor. The device is completely supplied via KNX. It's only KNX necessary. And when we use active sensors, then these active sensors need an external power supply. This is very important. Good. So far, I think we are at the end of this webinar. 
So let's have a few to the next webinar. So we continue in after the summer break yeah, at the end of September. It's also Wednesday, the 28th of September in the morning, same time, nine o'clock, the afternoon, three o'clock again. And we will talk about or introduce you our, our new um, uh, logic controller, ABA slash S logic controller, a very powerful device. We have uh, uh, introduced a device on the fair like building in Frankfurt. And now it is available September, October. And we talk about this graphical programming interface, how powerful the device is. Uh, we have a simulation tool inside. You can do a simulation online or offline. A web user interface for operating also. Maybe the end user has, uh, has access to the device via IP and a lot of more things. So of course you get invitation uh, email. Um, however, remember the date, 28th of September, and Thorsten and me, we would like to say thank you for participating this webinar today, and we are looking forward to welcome you again on the 28th of September. Have a nice summer break, enjoy the summer holiday with your family, and see you again. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jürgen. Thorsten again. Um, yeah, if you have still any questions, we keep the chat open for another 10 minutes. So if you would like to communicate with us, additionally, no problem. Otherwise, uh, we will see us then in September. And I say thank you and goodbye. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.